Hi, Yarn the Bees. Crochet B here. So, um, we asked on the last video that Sandy and I did if uh, you guys would be interested in hearing uh, the story of the three nastiest carpet cleaning jobs I've ever done. And uh, looking at the comments, it seems that there are a few of you who would like to. So, I must warn you, um, full disclaimer here, uh, some of the details can be a little, a little nasty. So if you are a sensitive snowflake, or easily offended, or a delicate flower, uh, you may want to may want to not listen. But uh, anyways, I'll try not to make it. Uh, well, if I tell the story, it's the story. So uh, I've basically had the business now almost 20 years, and in that time, I've done thousands and thousands of jobs, and. Uh, I've run into just about every conceivable thing you could possibly imagine uh, over the course of that. I really love what I do. Um, I wish, honestly, I had started doing it uh, in my younger years, like literally right out of high school. I was in my mid-40s when I started. And uh, actually, a lot of carpet cleaners, by the time they're in their mid-40s, they can't even do the job anymore. They've wrecked their back or their shoulders or it, it can be it's really a, not an easy job on your body so um i get away with it because i keep myself you know pretty fit and um and also not being overly tall is an advantage for me because the taller you are the more you have to bend over when you work the wand and it tends to hit your lower back where a lot of guys they hurt their lower back and they they can't work anymore where i tend to get sore a lot is, is in my upper back and around my neck and and my traps and all up in here um, and it gets like this kind of stuff and then Sandy can massage it out or I can use the hot tub or things that I can do to, to keep going. So anyway, um, so I've, like I say, I've run into just about everything you could imagine. Uh, one of the most common questions people always ask me is, you know, they say things like, you must've seen some terrible stuff and, and all of that. And then uh, what's the grossest job you've ever done? Um, so that's what basically what this is going to be about. So, um, when I started the business, I was determined that I would, I would never turn a job down, no matter how nasty it was. If people needed me, I was willing to come. Uh, a lot of people that get into this are looking to, uh, make a quick buck or they just want to do the easy or jobs or work for the rich folks where they can charge a lot of money. Um, that doesn't work so good in our market that uh, Vancouver Island is a fairly small, uh, place so you really can't um, cherry pick like that I don't think and be able to make it long term some of the companies that have tried that are companies that have gone out of business because they just the only way to to make it here is to be be the guy for everybody so I'm proud of the fact like I did a job today for a lady um, she's a sweet old lady in her 90s and she called me because her cat had gotten sick all over uh, her bedroom carpet so I literally went there and I cleaned this one room for her. It only cost her $30. I showed up. I did it for 30 bucks. Nobody else will do that. She loves me. You know, big hug or whatever. And off we go. And uh, other times I will do places that are, you know, tens of thousands of square feet. So um, I have days where it's lots of little jobs. Days where it's lots of big jobs. So anyway, if you have any questions uh, about what I do or anything like that, you're, you're free to ask in the comments. Maybe we'll do a... A segment called ask the carpetologist um, and I can answer any questions you have so basically the three nastiest jobs I've done so um, probably if I had to rank them probably the third one that I did was one that uh, didn't look like it was going to be nasty but I showed up at a lady's house and this was a few years ago and this lady was about you know 12 and a half months pregnant when I showed up. She was ready to go. And I just got started and all of a sudden she looks at me, terror in her face and uh, her water had broken and she was now into instant labor. Like bam, the baby's coming. And it's like, <clears throat> no time to panic, no time to do anything. You're stuck in this situation. There's nothing that you can do. So, um, you know, I suppose there are people that just would have ran out of there screaming, <laughs> you know, Sandy definitely would have freaked out and probably collapsed on the floor. But uh, one thing she probably would tell you is I have a pretty cool head in the crisis and I'm usually able to focus. 
So next thing I know, I am now getting ready to deliver a baby. Um, so I'm I'm on the phone to 911, and I'm telling them, like, you know, um, you got to get here. Like, this baby's coming, and, and they're telling me, well, you know, hang in there. We're going to be there in 20 minutes. And I said, he's not waiting for you. And they said, what do you mean? I said, he's looking at me like the head is out. So anyway, out comes the baby. And out comes everything that comes when the baby comes out and pfft, all over uh, the living room carpet. So um, by the time the baby was out, we had the baby out. I didn't mess with the cord or anything. I just handed it to the mom. The baby was crying. And next thing we know, they're knocking on the door. And in come the ambulance people. And they get mom together and wrap her all up in baby. And they're on the gurney and they're getting ready to take her out. And I'm telling her, don't worry, I'll stay behind. And clean this up and I did um eh, no additional charge I just recleaned the room that I just finished doing um and so yeah that one was a little rough but I mean you do what you got to do uh funny thing is um they never ever named the baby after me or anything and I don't think I ever really worked for her again I don't know if she was too embarrassed to have me come back because I saw her naked or or what the story was but anyway uh that's definitely one of the three. Um, the second one has to do with uh, probably the number one reason people call me, which is pets. Um, nothing gets your phone ringing like the lovely smell of cat pee or the dog has pooped all over the place. Or in Sandy's case, how we met, their cat had diarrhea all over the apartment. And you go there and you deal with that. So um, if you're going to be doing this job, you're going to be spending a lot of time cleaning up after pets. So, um, and I have seen every kind of pet you could imagine. I've seen people with dogs. I've seen people with cats. I have one lady that has uh, giant tortoises. Um, one lady has rabbits running everywhere. And rabbit pee is really nasty smelling when they pee everywhere. Um, one of my customers has over 300 parrots in acres of gigantic cages all over their property. When it comes to pets, people do... All kinds of crazy things. But this one that I did was one uh, one of the groups of people that I work for in Nanaimo. Is a, there's a uh, hoarding task force. So I do things for uh, our health authority for mental health patients, um, addiction stuff. So that's some of the ugliest, nastiest stuff you're going to do. Well, this was uh, one of the hoarding people. And what made it bad was there were 96 cats in this house. So you show up and there's guys there with everybody's got a hazmat suit on. They got a space suit on. They're walking everywhere. Of course, there's never a hazmat suit for you. You don't get a space suit, but you get the. So they're in there basically carrying out armloads of cats to go to SPCA or whatever. The lady had already been removed. These guys were removing the pets. And now I have to go in. And there was so much cat pee everywhere. I, I literally had to put on my rubber boots to go inside this house. And, and hours and hours of extracting, deodorizing, everything. And the worst thing, of course, is the lady was renting the house. She didn't own the house. So the poor landlord um, had to deal with that. So, you know, I always get a laugh when somebody calls and, and tells me, uh, Oh, this is really bad, you know, my dog or my cat or whatever. And I tell them, listen, I once cleaned a house with 96 cats. Like, there's nothing that you have that will be uh, any worse than that. So, and then the number one, and this one is one that I will never, never forget. So, hope you're ready for this. Fasten your seatbelts. Here we go. So, oh, what's in my cup? In this case, just a can of ginger ale. I'm dressed. I'm getting ready to go to my drag ammo practice in about an hour. So, um, so when I first started, um, when you're the, the new young guy, one of the things you like to do is, is kind of try to get your name around uh, to all the property managers and real estate people, hoping that they will refer uh, work to you. So I try to court them and wine and dine them and bug them and everything. And then I finally got... Um, the head of, of Remax Property Management, who at that time were pretty much the biggest in town. Um, they sent me out on a small job to do, uh, to see how I would do. And then after I did it, I had become their guy. So I, I was a made man. I had the Remax Property Management account, thinking this was going to be, you know, 
thousands of jobs every month. It's it's never never like that. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. They always call you with very little notice. Um, you always have to bend over backwards to try to keep them happy. Um, sometimes they don't pay you right away. They have certain days they do checks and you're waiting for money and all of that. But those are things you learn after you've obtained uh, the contract. So this was a this lady was a very sort of proper old English lady. So I'm uh, working and I get a phone call and it's her. And she says, um, we have a very bad one for you. So this is not the kind of thing you want to hear from this person. And so I'm going, well, what, what's the story? And the story was, this was a house. Uh, basically, it was a fourplex. So we had three bedrooms, a hallway, a uh, living room, dining room kind of thing. So about $150 or so uh, worth of cleaning to do. So, and these guys had moved out mid-month, hadn't paid the rent, um, left garbage strewn all over everywhere, never cleaned anything up, just took off. And uh, the uh, management company didn't realize until the end of the month when it was rent was due and there was no rent. Couldn't get a hold of them, sent somebody to check it out and realized that they had taken off. And so they send the cleanup crew in there and and they're cleaning and it's horrible and garbage bags full of stuff they're packing up and uh, the whole time they're there they're going like like something really smells bad in here you know and they're trying to figure out like god it's this is awful and then they get to the little coat closet by the front door and they open up the coat closet and they find seven dead cats in there so these cats were dead. Either they were killing the cats or the cats had died and they left the bodies in this coat closet. And they're all rotting, decomposing, you, you name it. This is like the height of the summer, super hot. So, you know, of course they freak out and they somehow managed to bag these things up and get them out of there. But the odor was just terrible. So the job was to go and to clean all the carpets and especially deodorize and get this horrible smell out of this little area that was basically, it's like two feet by three feet. It's a small little little square of carpet. So I go there, all enthusiastic, here we go, you know, and I'm doing the thing and I do the three bedrooms and I'm coming down the hall and I'm doing the living room. So I've done everything else. I get to this little closet and I open up the closet and I get my wand and I run my wand over the area, injecting my cleaner. And as soon as I did that, all these maggots come rising up. <laughs> like billions and billions. And bleh, bleh, like Night of the Living Dead, uh, you name it, just like, bleh, right? And so now I realize, oh, crap. Um, and so that's when you get this weird split personality thing that goes on inside. There's a part of you that just wants to run the hell out of there. Like, ah, get it out of there. But then the other part realizes that um, you've got to deal with this because if you don't, they are going to get past you and spread throughout. All of the stuff you've already done, plus there are people living below and on either side of this, this thing, right? So you realize, like, you've got to deal with this. So I literally, I'm telling you, I was there for three hours standing in that one spot, just, you know, killing them, sucking them up, killing them, sucking them up, killing them, sucking them up. And then when my machine would run out of water, I'd have to dump, dump the dirty water and the dead maggots out. And I would literally have the buckets fulls of these things that I'm dumping down the toilet and I'm flushing and I'm trying to fill it up as fast as I can so I can get back there before they, because every time you stop, they start to come up and they start to go like this. And then you got to get back there and, and kind of corral them and herd them all back again. And that was unbelievable. And so I kept going, I kept going. And then finally I didn't see any more. So you'd like, you'd turn off the machine and you'd wait. And then about a minute later, you see one poke his head up and another poke his head up and another, then you realize. So I eventually went till I did not see anything else. I have no idea where they were coming from, if they were coming from the, maybe even the unit below or what. But, I mean, I almost hurled 
And I have a pretty strong stomach, as you have to have in our business, or you don't last very long. But that one was just like, holy glug. And um, I finally got to the point where I thought I'd gotten them all. And then I called the lady on the phone. And I said, you know, this is what's happened. I said, I've, I guess I've got them all. I don't see any more. I don't know if there's eggs here or what. But you need to get an exterminator or somebody that deals with this problem. Because that's not, we're not pest control. A lot of people think we're going to come and kill the fleas and all. That's not. We kill it, the bodies of the fleas after the exterminator gets them, but we're not the exterminator. So that one will always, I can't imagine doing another one. I mean, I have um, I have cleaned up in rooms where people have passed away. I have done suicide cleanups. I have done some of these other ones. And, um, and yeah, they can be, most of the time before I get there, the bulk of the really bad stuff's already been dealt with and you're coming just to clean and deodorize and disinfect. And you don't see a lot of the blood and guts and, and whatever like you think you might because they've already had other other folks in there doing stuff. So, uh, but you know, I've done ones where, you know, grandma's come home and she's died in the room, the hospice kind of scenario. And, you know, I have done that sort of thing before. But uh, this one with the, the zombie cat maggot thing was just, uh, nothing's ever going to take the cake of that one. I've uh, And that was like early, early on in my uh, carpet cleaning career and uh, if that didn't make me quit I guess nothing well but uh, anyway we got it done the, the management company was very happy they were able to successfully re-rent the suite out so we did our job and everything but um, that's one I don't think too many I don't know how many of my compatriots would have been able to handle that one a lot of the guys are um, you know most of the people in my area either want to make the quick money or want to do, don't have to work too hard uh, doing what they have to do. They're not they're like me that get down on your hands and knees and really get in there uh, kind of stuff like what I do. You know, you see these companies where the guys have, you know, white dress shirts and little bow ties. Now they're thinking, I don't know what job you do because when I come home, like you can wring my shirts out and I've got stuff all over me. I look like I've been in a war some days, right? So anyway, that's my story. So those were the three nastiest ones. The baby delivery job, the 96 cats in the house job, and the zombie cat maggot cleanup job are the three nastiest jobs I've ever done. So there you go. Not a lot of humor in there in some of them, but, uh, you know, it's, sometimes it's funny stuff. Sometimes it's ugly stuff. Um you know, sometimes uh, it's sad. Like I just did a job today for the son of a lady that I cleaned for for almost 20 years who passed away about a month ago. And it's the first time I've been back there since she's passed away. And, you know, her clothes are still in the closet because he hasn't gotten around, you know. So it can be sad. You do connect with your customers. You like to think you're more than just the hired help and you get to know them. And with the old gals, I usually like to give them a hug or, or whatever to make them feel special and it's kind of all part of, of, of what I do with them and stuff. I, I got a soft spot for the old gals, I guess. Um, anyway, so that's it. Um, you wanted to know, so now you know. I hope it wasn't too bad for you. Um, it's only a description. If you would have seen what it looked like in real life, it was, I've never seen anything like these things just coming up almost in a, in a wave of, you know, it, it was like, holy doodles. i had never seen anything like it, so. Anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, really happened. These, these stories are true. I don't need to make them up because stuff happens to me almost every day out here. So anyway, now you know. Have a good day, guys, and we'll see you on the next carpet trip.